we do it. Drop it. Juice. Look. Ride on until the world is cracked up and the sky is open They be telling me lies, took an entire portion of my family portrait And denied the culprit, my mind's insulted Cause I'm a sultan, a king in 16's what I'm a sultan Battery shatter, the cataracts up and see it till I am exhausted And my vernacular leaving them nauseous I'm attacking the world but speaking the nonsense Travel magnificence, peace of their conscience I'm deep and content with my content Looking to the light, to the east of my continent Better catch up like condiments Money never bought a nigga common sense So when I rhyme, I'm making sure every line condensed With insight, give insight even the blind convince We can put me in like Papa bitch Politics, lots of tooks Caught your optics, little pop they got lots of tricks, it's like Copperfield I'm copping still for that martial law So when I start to draw, it's like Molotov's Going across the jaw, ball for ball Cause nigga, this the art of war Yeah! There's a beat on revolution Unless there is Russia Never cheat much yet Get off the table Get off the table Get off the table Get off the table Get on them, all the lies the tortoise got a lives distorted. So I just wrote a few bars of warning. It's a call for action on my top for talking, exercising, caution, sort of iron on them. If it's time for war, then I'll be riding on them till the earth is cracked and the sky is scorching up. President is in the highest office, and y'all really think they ain't buying off with these rocks, guys, donations. I ain't the type to write a rope statement, but it's ice by hype with no basis. Joe's flying by, they don't phase us. To say y'all be robbing no breaks, bitch. Why they spot a find the locations? I'm no patriot, I'd rather raise a fist. And y'all claiming it's unpatriotic. Power by the proud wisdom of my people when it makes me racist. Explain your logic. Make a minge, I'd rather make a profit, so we teach that you two can raise some conscious when the revolution comes bloodshed. God can't do a thing about it. Malcolm warned you ain't no way around it, and I ain't no way today they acknowledge it. Raided the conference and made alliances to raid the continent and rape the continent. Take the knowledge and the face the monuments. Avoid everything synonymous and wicked to the niggas that they place the bondage just to make them dollars. All right, peace and blessings, family. Shibra Atun Ra here at it again. Uh, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Melanated and Illuminated. Um, Man, this week, man, I'm uh, I'm I'm humbled and I'm blessed to you know have uh, another great warrior and scholar in the building uh, with me. Um, he's he's one of my peers that you know if you don't know about him, you should definitely look into his work. Um, my man Ali York, man, thank you for joining me today, brother. What's happening, man? Peace and black power. Oh man, um, man, how you how you doing today, man? We we didn't had a had to move around a little yeah, bit, but all right. uh, but it's you all know right. we um, we making it work, and we mm-hmm. um, we still getting this message to the people. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? No matter what. So, um, brother Ali, man, can you just introduce yourself? You know what I'm saying to the people, man. You know we got listeners all around. Just kind of tell them, you know, your background a little bit, and you know what you do. Okay, well. People using, of course, know me from just being son of Dr. York. That's my biological father. So I was mentored by him for a good, at least two years, and also mentored by his student teachers that he had already had before I even got into the information. So I came out of the Nawapian Nation. So as I got older, you know, it was like, you know, of course, having a bookstore here, All Eyes on Egypt. I had pretty much the only bookstore that was ever in King's Flea Market. And so when I basically decided to, to leave the Nuwapian Nation was when I pretty much decided to venture out on my own. So I pretty much have been teaching off and on, mostly consistent for like the past 11 years. Okay. You know, here in Houston. And so now it's just been about connecting also with Houston Uni Tribe and working with them. Absolutely. And then also continuing to just work. So now it's all about, for me, it's about African liberation through necessary information. And it's all about what is needed to basically dispel a lot of non-facts to deal with reality and where we need to move progressively as African people. Mm, man, big shout out to Houston Unity Tribe, man. They always um, come out and support us, you know, in our, our various events. And we always are looking to support them and everything they do, um, you know, because we definitely need unity in the community amongst those of us that are in social organizations, you know, for for us to, you know, just kind of put our egos to the side for a second and, you know, see how we can, you know, work together, you know, saying to achieve some of the same goals. Mm-hmm. So, um, brother, where are you, um, you, you teaching anywhere specifically now? Well, what I've decided to do for right now is focus in, I stopped doing my conference calls because it was science in the WAPO class for like four years. 
and I stopped them. And I decided to basically restructure it into Nine Mind Radio that I'll be starting back up next month. Okay. And Nine Mind Radio would be like a same thing conference call, same thing you do. Okay. Except it's it's like, um, because Science and the Wapo was basically encased in whatever was in your organization for the most part. Okay. So Nine Mind Radio is a different. It's it's. It encompasses all types of stuff. I'm dealing with the news. I'm deciphering what things that most people can't see, and I'm dealing with subjects. So it's it's everything. Like okay. now, I'm able to basically move about without being okay. You using this name, but you're not. You 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 have to stay in this parameter. There's no parameters no more. So that's why I say nine mind because dealing with nine reasoning and nine overstanding to go into that realm of how you're able to overstand everything that you see from a whole different perspective now. Oh, man. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nine Mind Radio. Mm-hmm. Okay, man. I'm going uh, um, to make sure I get my listeners to petition to give me a job over there, man. <laughs> get Ali, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, man, um, you know, I'm, um, like I said, I'm, I'm humbled to have you here today, man. Um you know, because one of the main reasons I want to, to bring you in is because there's been a lot of um, anti-science, mm-hmm. anti-intellectual talk, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, within our community. Because, you know, you realize that people are waking up to the paradigm that we've been lied to our whole life. So, right, right. you know, it's, it's natural not to trust, you know what I'm saying, some of the information that you think comes from your oppressor. Mm-hmm. But, you know what I'm saying, the other part about it is people don't realize that a lot of people that we that we quote unquote give it, that we give credit to like Darwin and other people like that these people studied under you know what I'm saying our African ancestors mm-hmm. to get the knowledge that they got mm-hmm. you know like when I learned that um, Darwin studied under John Edmundstone who taught him mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying taxonomy and he was the one that kind of gave him the, the trinkets and clues to go do his so called expedition that made this discovery or whatever that mm-hmm. people that already kind of know right. you know when you talk about that everything on earth is connected you know right. what I'm saying it all came from one and it's all somehow in some way connected when you're talking about humans and the trees or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying humans and the, the grass or the whatever you know what I'm saying and so um, you know what, what do you what do you think about um, the whole um movement of what I would call anti-intellectual, anti-science talk. You mm. know. Yeah, and, and it's crazy because most of it comes down to ignorance of, of things you're not really, you're not being critical of. Like, a person can't, you can't be anti-science because that's like saying you're anti how you got here. Mm. That's like saying you're anti-procreation. You not you can't be anti like for example, when people say they're anti evolution, that's really weird because human beings evolve. You can't you're not I'm not I'm thirty five. I can't I'm not seven year old anymore. Right. You evolve <laughs> right. to get to right. a point. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? You evolve to get to a point. So that's a that's a tail sign of how <sighs> things have always been. Trees evolve. Hum, you know, plants evolve. Animals evolve. So you can't be anti-science because how do you decipher things logically and be critical if you don't use scientific method? Hey man, first thing they can say, um, I ain't come from no monkey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean but that's the main okay. defense. Like, you know, like there's so much more to the puzzle than just coming from a damn monkey. And right. we didn't come from no monkey. Right. But if you really study it, that's not what evolution mm-hmm. is saying. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Anything mm-hmm. uh, like that. Um, you know, before we get too deep into the uh, the, the topic today, right. man, I just mm-hmm. want to ask you, man, had you um, got to see any of the, um, the, the debates or follow any of this um, ritual that we call voting for president? Oh, gosh. Um, I, 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 I'm so unplug to that I just hear it and look at memes and laugh <laughs> cause it's like you already know who's controlling it so it's like am I really gonna look at this just for just for giggles man it's just it's just a it's it's funny because it's like you already know the outcome mm-hmm. it's like looking at professional wrestling you already know 
sure. what the outcome is. You pretty much have an idea of the situation. Right. The thing is, is that my thing with the debates is, is this a way to get black people to, to truly wake up and understand that this is not for you? Hmm. Like, this is just a, a thing to give you this false narrative that you're controlling this. Hmm. Now, if you like, the whole thing, even with, with Trump being as, as blatant racist as he is, is that enough to get you to say, wow, this is ridiculous? Is 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 Clinton's statements enough that she's called you a super predator? Is that enough for him to for it to leave you alone? That'd be my question. Has it has it been enough to say, you know what? Wow, this person really said this. She's right. okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this alone. But for some reason, we we're under that mindset that we fought to do this, so I gotta vote. That, but your, your ancestors also fought for you just to be free and for you to read, but you're not investigating anything of who this connected to. Mm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're not understanding anything dealing with the Electoral College no. or anything like that. No. Uh, and so, yeah, man, it's, it's a lot of um, pandering, you know what I'm saying, going yeah. on on both sides. And, yeah, um, it, it's pretty interesting, you know, to watch just the, um, the blatant, Mm-hmm. The blatancy of the racism, oh, gosh. and you know how, like you said, that still is not you know what I'm saying enough to just get people to open up their eyes to the reality. And actually, what's funny is like you hear just as many white people talking about mm-hmm. <laughs> this bullshit. We're not gonna vote and everything else like that. And right. like, you know, well, a point I often bring up is about the Tea Party. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even though I don't support the Tea Party or anything like that, but. Right. Right? Hey, you got a group of white males saying that, hey, the government is bullshit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, these boys been lying. They been stealing money. You know what I'm saying? And all these things that they told us that we were going to be when we came over here for immigrants. Right. Ain't none of us living in no million dollar mansions or mm. nothing like that. And so, mm. hey, you is, you know what I'm saying, got even, you know what I'm saying, white people calling out they fake government that's supposed, supposed to protect them. Mm. And we here sitting they thinking that you know, still got that illusion of inclusion that something is, you know what I'm saying, somebody going to trickle something down to us. Right, and, right. you know, none of these people are. No, man. It, it, if we if we really looked up what is CFR, just to start, just, just for a small statement, trilateral commission, or just mm. council of foreign relations. Mm. If we looked up what council of foreign relations really was and the fact that they're literally pulling the strings. I mean, council of foreign relations is... is Rockefeller, Rothschild, Rosenwald, Duponts, they're they they decide what who's gonna continue their policy. I mean, they they bought this country literally during the during the depression. Right. When it was at its worst state, they bought the country, and from that point, they've been following the same policy. And you have to do your thing is with us because of we talked about earlier with the miseducation, we don't know where to look to find what we need. Right. And that's the problem. Hmm. Man. That's, that's so true, man. Mm-hmm. Um, so, man, let me ask you, man. Do you do you think that um, do you think that voting locally does anything? Voting locally does something. You have to also be in tune with what happens locally, right? Because let's say, for example, like if I go back to my my neighborhood, which is like the Sharpstown District. Sharpstown District literally has delegates that are mainly Hispanic. And they control that area. Right. So you have to know who's your delegates in that area. And you have to get out and go to these different meetings. Even if you're not voting, just sit in the back and listen to what's being said. So right. you can already have a, a leg up on what they're trying to do in your area. Right. But yeah. Um, yeah and absolutely yeah. just realizing like the, mm-hmm. um, the science of politics, dealing with like the primaries. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying, how the, how they be um, gerrymandering districts and mm-hmm. things like that. And it, it was interesting because um, several years ago, I got to um, work on a campaign with one of my partners. He wanted to run for our local um, state district representative mm-hmm. position. And you know what I'm saying, the person, you know what I'm saying, um, she'd been in for a while or whatever. And so the way that they got our district drawn over here, it's pretty much all Democrats. Mm-hmm. There's no Republicans or anything. So there's even no Republicans on the ballot. Right. So what they don't tell you is basically whoever wins the primary 
is automatically going to win the election because they're going to be the only Democrat on there. And most people vote state party and everything like that. So mm -hmm. the real battle was in the primaries. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what I'm saying, she spent a lot more money than us. You know what I'm saying? We started real late. We wasn't real organized or anything. And so my boy, he probably got about 500 votes. Mm -hmm. And um, old girl, she like I said, had been in office. She got about um, about forty five hundred. So you talking about a difference of four thousand mm -hmm. from an area that starts? We talking about District One Thirty One that starts at like um, let's say Gessner and Airport and goes all the way over here to um, like um, Almeda, Genoa, and mm -hmm. Scott. So I mean, you talking about sixty, seventy thousand people, people, right? And only four. You know, only really 5,000 people voted, you know what I'm saying? Right. So you're talking about a difference of 4,000. Right. You know what I'm saying? That, that really just you could have got. And so, you know, it's just things like that that, you know what I'm saying, got me looking into it. And, and then that's when you understand, like, why they don't really promote the primaries. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or why they don't really promote the elections that aren't on presidential years. Because, mm -hmm. you know, that's when a lot of the stuff is going on. Right. But, you know what I'm saying? They get you in the illusion of only voting every four years. Mm -hmm. like, that's almost an election going on almost every year. Right. So, you know, like you said, you definitely got to get more in tune to right. what's going on, the local referendums, right. and tax increases, and all things like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's also about getting proper representation um, for the community. And, right. you know, it seems like that a lot of people that are in charge now definitely are not for the community and don't have the best interests for the community. You know what I'm saying? They okay with selling the community out to yeah. corporations and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just to get by. So, yeah. you know, we, we definitely have to get more... Um, you know, politically literate, you know what I'm saying, yeah. political savvy, uh, you know, uh, Malcolm X <laughs> called us political chumps back yeah. in the day, you yeah. know what I'm saying, and yeah. you still see it today, you know, that we still voting for the same people that support the same people that still you know, doing mm -hmm. the same shit. Doing the same thing. Yeah, but, um, man, we're going to go ahead and take a break, okay. then we're going to come back, man, we're going to dig into this, um, I'm going to get my boy Ali to break down the, the science of melanin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can talk about some different theories that are out there. Mm -hmm. okay. This segment of the show is brought to you by the Blacklist Association. The Blacklist Association is a Houston-based collective for community and cooperative economics. We're committed to the practice of shared social wealth and the work necessary to build our own businesses and control the economics of our own community. If you own a black business or know of any businesses that would like to be featured on the blacklist, please go like our page on Facebook at the Blacklist Association. You can go register at our main website at blacklisthouston.org or you can follow us on Instagram at blacklistorg. Peace. All right. We are back, man, with my man Ali York. You know what I'm saying? We in here. Um... You know, a topic that has been getting a lot of um, traction lately has been the um, the science, or should I say just the topic of melanin. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I really wouldn't say just the science because I'm not seeing too much science behind mm -hmm. it from some people. You know what I'm yeah. Of course, you know, I know people like me and you know what I'm saying? We do some research, man. I've been going through um, this book right here. It's pretty interesting, The Science and Myth of Melanin by T. Owens Moore. Okay. Um, you know what I'm saying? I think that was a book he wrote back in... Um, like 94 oh, okay. or whatever. So uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, just kind of dealing with the actual science because I think that sometimes like um, those of us that are really into history mm -hmm. kind of let our perceptions of history influence how we see everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when you, when you start getting into the realm of science, you can't necessarily make generalizations without experiments and things like right, that. And right. then, I mean, once you experiment something, you know, you have to go with, you know what I'm saying, where the, the, the data leads you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You can't allow your biases to, you know, yeah. change stuff. So, yeah, exactly. um, you know, could you just, you know, explain to the, the listeners on melanated and illuminated, you know what I'm saying? What is your um, view or concept of melanin? Or how would you define it? Yeah, to so start in the brain first, literally in the brain. It's it's crazy because if I just say the brain, then I'm not even starting within the universe. Because mm -hmm. if I don't start in the universe, 
then I'm not even really starting with what melanin really is because supreme blackness still is melanin. If I go outside this planet now, it's in the solar system, you still are seeing melanin. That's still every, every combination of all existing gases of nature creates what is, what is pure melanin. And that's what you see in space. When you deal with the sun, the sun itself is a gaseous form that's perceived to be light. When it's nothing but energy that flickers at different speeds, that itself in the purest form of you see the sun is blackness. So that is, again, is a big ball of melanin when it's in its purest form. Now, in terms of human beings, as I said before, the first place you have to start is the brain. Because you're starting at the pineal gland, which is located in the hippocampus area of the brain. So what is known as brain melanin defines exactly what all other parts of the body is going to give. Because neuromelanin is going to give off what nutrients or what parts of melanin is going to be given to your organs, to your hair, and as well as your intelligence, and as also your temperament. Because remember... Neuromelanin also shapes exactly how you act. It shapes exactly if you're irrational, if you're rational, if you're able to control your emotions. That's why when we go back into time, as you said, how, how do we define? You can't let science and time kind of conflict. But it's funny because when you deal with inferences and how you look at Caucasians, or we call them white people today, you're looking at a group that's irrational naturally because of their lack of a pineal gland. So when you're dealing with brain melanin, that's why when you go and you look at Africans all over the world, you're literally seeing genius manifested. Mm -hmm. If you if you don't tamper with it, because us in America we've been tampered with through slavery, disenfranchisement, poor education. So we're not even really being exactly who we're supposed to be. So you're you're starting from the the brain melanin first or what we will call would be um, to the to, to, to the pineal to the pineal gland, and once you start to that point, you're dealing with organs because there's melanin within your sperm, and what also enables Africans to basically produce as many children as they have is the amount of melanin in your system. When you have a deficiency in something, you're going to be deficient in whatever part. That that plays, especially even in organs, because in or just say for example, that's why when you deal with whites today or Europeans, they every time you turn around they have sicknesses that they constantly are carrying. They're dealing with um, not being able to produce at the amount that Africans do, but then they want to control people's population growth because they they want to keep everyone at the same level that they are. Because they're not able to produce on that level. And that's just dealing with organ melanin. But then when you deal with skin melanin, which is the part that most people want to deal with, you're dealing with something that is not just at an epidermis level. The epidermis is what's called the melanocytes. And mm -hmm. that's strengthened by the brain melanin. And what you see is determined by what's in the brain melanin. If the brain melanin is going to have a lack thereof, it's going to manifest itself in a transparency of skin in the, in the melanocytes. The melanosomes is something that's responsible for the hair. Because you melanin, remember, melanin is also contained in the hair. It's, all, it's also contained in the nails as well. How weak your nails are is determined by how much melanin you have in you. And then you have also... Eumelanin and pheomelanin. Mm -hmm. melanin is dealing with the African. melanin is usually dealing with the Caucasian mm -hmm. or the Asian on the planet, or the mm -hmm. Orient, or the Chinese, or whatever you, or the yeah, Mongol, or whatever you want to call it. The EU is the dark melanin. Exactly, and the mm -hmm. eumelanin, which is known as the blacks, the black melanin, that is the first foundation of what is skin melanin. Mm -hmm. See, the main thing that we deal with again is skin melanin. So, whatever you are, is what is going to be genetic. So if you manifest yourself a certain way, that shows how strong your genetics are or how weak your genetics are. Genetics is the one thing that does not lie. Hmm. You can, you can, people say numbers yeah. don't lie. You can lie on numbers, yeah. but whoever you are is going to manifest in your children or is going to manifest in self. So that's the first thing is that when you say melanin, everything in existence has it. But when you're dealing with 
the differentiation between blacks and Caucasians or Asians, because in reality now, when we find this new information about the Neanderthals, they're literally in the same group. The Asians and the whites or the Caucasians. Right. Asians and Europeans are literally now in the same categorization, the same, same family in terms of um, racial or group because they have the same origin in terms of what is their origin on the planet. Okay, man. So we're going to get into that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, b before we uh, get too far into that, man, I, I, I love how you uh, kind of, how you, how you broke down the, the science of melanin because um, a lot of people only deal with it on the skin pigmentation level. Right. And, and they use the knowledge on the um, skin pigmentation level to then make the determination about behavior right. versus how you started with the neuromelanin mm -hmm. and understanding how the brain melanin is more of a catalyst that would lead to behaviors mm -hmm. than just the skin melanin. Like you said, the skin melanin is like the end result of the manifestation of, you know what I'm saying, that brain melanin mm -hmm. and also, you know what I'm saying, going through the organs and everything like mm -hmm. that. So I love, I love that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, because I think that, that's how more people have to present it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, because we can't just get caught up in the, on the skin level. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, like, that's the last level. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It starts, you know what I'm saying? Well, we know it starts in the cosmos to the sun. You know what I'm saying? But just on the, you know what I'm saying, on the, on the physical form, you know what I'm saying? It starts in the brain. Right. And then it all leads down from there. And so, yes, man, more, <laughs> more power to that, man. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, uh, yeah. I, I I don't think I had anything else to say on no, that, man. Um, so, man, um, well, you just was kind of, um, we're kind of building on. So, when we talk about Europeans or white mm -hmm. people or mm -hmm. anything else like that, um, you know, a lot of brothers say, you know what I'm saying, they don't come from us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're not different. But then, you know what I'm saying, we do say that we are the originals. You know what I'm saying? M mother and um, father of civilization. Mother and father of the civilization. Mm -hmm. So, how can you how can you have both? You know what I'm saying? Like how can you be the mothers and fathers of civilization, but then also Europeans not come from us? Mm, the first question you have to be is what is civilization? Mm, to be civil. This the first question is mm. what is civilization? Mm. Who are civilized? What family on the planet <coughs> constitutes civilization? Hmm. Um, if I base it on action, it wouldn't be specific groups. Yeah, definitely. We're the mother and father of civilization. We're, we're civilization is a group that is that was civilized hmm. Hmm. and acts as civilizers of the rest of the planet. Absolutely. So if I'm basing that, I'm like, yeah, I'm the mother. We're the mothers and fathers of those who were civilized or who are the civilizers of the planet, because a person who is civilized is a person who has to be civilized or they were once in an uncivil state and brought to a civil state. Hmm. So if I'm your mother and your father, I don't mean I have to necessarily come, you don't have to necessarily come from me, but I civilized you. So yes, in reality, we're, we're, I'm the father and the mothers of specific groups of people, but the reality is who's really civilized on the planet. Based on action, certain people are not civilized. Hmm. So I'm not your mother or your father. <laughs> so like, if I'm dealing with genetics, yeah. see, again, genetics and DNA don't lie. That's why you see now with all these, you know, our people being let go in the, in, 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 in the criminal system based on new DNA evidence. Right. They never got that chance to actually find real evidence because next thing you know, one white person or, or one white man or woman says, well, he's guilty and he gets sent off. And the next thing you know, 30 years later, DNA, DNA evidence comes in. And so now it's like, oh, man, uh, we sorry. Because that, yeah. that right there doesn't lie. But again, we ourselves are, we started everything. But the problem is when we want to deal with origins of race, it's easy to say, like, for example, it's a play on words. Everybody came out of Africa, right? How? Where's the genetic evidence that every race came out of Africa? Hmm. Because if I just use a hypothesis or an assumption, 
how do I know that that's the truth without any DNA evidence to prove so? Because if I just use, let's say, for example, it's, it's people who, as I said, one group will say that whites came out of um, climatology difference in terms of who's closer to the equator and who's further away from the equator. Mm -hmm. This group over here might say that they're gravitations. This group over here might say something like, um, no, they, they came out of this group of monkeys over here. So it depends on which one brings the DNA evidence. Now, based on my own research, because I, I haven't been to Europe, so I can't take a, you know, a Neanderthal DNA and do it, but based upon my own research, we don't, they don't come from us. Because if I go back, let's say, for example, 60,000 years ago, this is what they give. 60,000 years ago, Africans migrated into Europe and encountered Neanderthals. Mm -hmm. Okay, they were already there. Right. Now the question remains because, in order for me to, you know how we are, I have to give you a white source in order for it to be verified. <laughs> right. right. National Geographic states that Africans migrated out was a great migration. Sixty thousand years ago, we encountered Neanderthals. So you can you mean to tell me that there was no point where there was a in ages, some people call it the Wormian Ice Age, where this group specifically, as they said, that was the Khoisan group that migrated into a migrated into Europe, lost melanin, had to depigment themselves and become albino. But according to DNA evidence, and the name of the this just to give you a point of reference, it was called the Neanderthal Genome Project, and that was done in May 2010. And what that concluded was that Caucasians specifically came out of a group that was called Cro-Magnus. Mm. And they evolved literally into Neanderthals coming from a basically a 10,000 year period. And what the Africans encountered was them in a Cro-Magnus state. Okay, okay. So let's, um, let's, let's build, let's, let's rewind on that. You keep trying yeah. to throw a lot out there. So, like, yeah, it's, it's obvious that there's no way that um, they would um, devolve into albinos. Because, right. I mean, like, um, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, and this, this is kind of like what we were talking about earlier on dealing with actual um, neuromelanin mm -hmm. to where you see that even though albinos lack skin mm -hmm. melanin, you know what I'm saying? They still have, a lot of them still have the same levels of neuromelanin. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. that's the reason why, you know, See that you know what I'm saying type of behavior out of them, you know what I'm saying? Because they 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 African, you know what I'm saying, at the core too. You just but then that's when you have to get beyond just dealing with the, the skin people. Exactly. So So you said that Neanderthals evolved out of Cro Magnus. The Cro Magnus, yes. Okay, so where are the um so the Cro Magnus came out of Asia, mm -hmm. is that correct? The Cro the Cro Magnus was already in Europe. Cro-Magnus was already in Europe. Yes. Okay, and so is, is there a, any um, evolutionary track for the, the Cro-Magnus? The Cro-Magnus coming, coming first, as they said, this was coming out of the ape family. Okay. And Cro-Magnus going from Cro-Magnus, which is be what will be called the genus Homo. Okay. The Homo erectus would be classified as a Neanderthal. Okay. When you're going into the white race, they're going from a Neanderthal going up into a sped up of an evolution when they mixed in and they, they actually had whoever, and this was known as um, the name of the South Africans again was called the Khoisan group. And the first African to teach this was a man named Sheikh Antadia. 30,000 years ago, also a man, now before I go 30,000 years, you have a man named Robin Walker who also gives further information updated off of what Diop said, that these were Khoisan women who were the first humans to inhabit that area. And we know mm. what they look like. These are the Khoisan people that are of South Africa that are indigenous to that land to this day. They themselves, when they came over there, they encountered bones of Cro-Magnus or what was Neanderthal after they had already been even. This was 30,000 years ago. These were women only that had actually set up a civilization in Europe. Right. 
when they encountered the bones of Neanderthals. And you have to realize as well that these that were known as the Khoisan as well as the Aboriginal Australians, they were tested and there was no Neanderthal DNA. There was no white DNA. There was no trace of any group of them that depigmented in ice and became Caucasian. Right. So they never give, okay, where's the DNA evidence? This is usually just a story or a theory. That's why most people say, well, this is the I Wormian Ice Age theory. But where's the DNA evidence that connects? Because y'all use the Khoisan Grimaldi group to say this. Right. Where's the DNA evidence that ties ancient Caucasians to Grimaldi groups and there is no connection genetically or DNA wise to this group. So to, to go even further, not only is it the white race, but you also have the Asians or what I don't know how many branches from Chinese and Mongolian to Asian to Japanese, they have two percent Neanderthal DNA if you if you actually do the, the research according to the Neanderthal Genome Project of 2010, they themselves are not fully human as well as the Caucasian race or the white race. The only ones are fully human are the African race. Right. And so, um, and so, like you said, they, that was a, um, a, a speed up in evolution once the those mixing Neanderthals and once the they, mixing they, they had mi they mixed up with the right. um, with the what was it the the Khoisan people. The Khoisan women, yeah. they came in and they basically, during the time of trying to set up a civilization, it was a raping that took place. That's why if you speed up in time, during the time of Kush, between Kush and Kemet, they had to create a system where they were trying to keep these Caucasians in the caves right. because they realized the animalistic nature that they exuded in trying to mix in and trying to rape our women. Right. This is something that they've been doing for years, and I, and I also saw that um, you know I you know I'm always into like peer review papers and stuff mm -hmm. like that because like you said niggas won't believe nothing unless you you know give a white source yeah give a white source <laughs> so, um, but you know it was interesting looking into they were studying about the um, the mixture between you know what I'm saying Homo sapiens and Neanderthals and they were saying you know how more likely than not it was it was unsuccessful mm -hmm. just because you know what I'm saying like. The, the, the womb, you know what I'm saying, would, would kill it, yeah, you know right. what I'm saying, a lot of times, yeah. you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and, and especially that basically the only way that there was a successful birth was through a black woman, mm -hmm. was what through one of the, the, the homo sapien African women, right. was because they couldn't even do it through the, uh, the Neanderthal no. women, no. you know what I'm saying, like it wouldn't, it wouldn't last at all. Because they were too gen genetically weak. Right. And I think it's because because the Khoisan women are extremely fertile, that sped up their evolution to where they can, they're, they're not, the men are no longer as infertile. So because of them coming together, the Khoisan woman and the Neanderthal man of a raping process, they were able to get, be, be able mm. to actually have an ability that they would not normally have right. naturally. And that's why you don't see, to my understanding, I believe I saw that there are no uh, like wide chromosome Neanderthal men no. anymore. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that mm -mm. completely wiped out. So you said that the, the Asians and you know what I'm saying what we now call Europeans mm -hmm. would, would come from this specific yeah. process. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so where where this specific um what region was this type of mating? Was it going on? See and this was during a, a part of where you now know was what's known as Paris this is what's known as where Germany is because 70% of Europe was occupied basically of the Khoisan women or Khoisan people. That's why um, if, you, if you do your research, you connect, um, they were known as the first hunter-gatherers of that area. That's, and, and just to do your research as well on the name Grimaldi, the name Grimaldi comes out of a Paris anthropologist who was digging up Grimaldi bones and or Khoisan bones and he named them Grimaldi hmm. and he found bones of them that were living in parts of forests and parts of caves and they ended up living there for a period of time after civilizing that area and making it a fertile land hmm. because at that point it was still somewhat cavish 
and they made it a fertile land. And then after they had went back into Africa and the Neanderthals basically took over, it became infertile because they did not know how to tend to the land. Hmm. And so the thing is, even to this day, that's one of the main reasons why the Khoisans to this day do not go outside of their tribe when they marry. Male or females are not allowed. The women are the ones that actually head that family and they usually speak in pairs. But that's the main reason going back as to why they don't even they don't make with no other Africans. They only stay within their own family because of that period of a, they their oral history is very vivid of what happened to them. But they were able to stay in and breed out whatever caucus or whoever Neanderthal was in them. They make sure that they went right back to the original. Right. Hmm. Man. And so, how long ago was this um, that the, the mixture between the Neanderthals and the Khoisan women? This had to have been between thirty to 60,000 years, and they say specifically it was around 50,000 years ago. Okay. So, all right. So, we had 50,000 years ago mm-hmm. to where this mating process happened. Mm-hmm. Now, what you hear is, you know, I hear, I hear a lot is that the, uh, what we would now call the European, mm-hmm. only evolved what they say six to eight thousand years ago. Right. So what was going on in between fifty thousand years ago and eight thousand years ago that would lead to what we have today? Because I mean obviously there was a timeline that went on. Good question. It's a modern Caucasian. Is it in between <laughs> a Neanderthal and a modern Caucasian? Modern Caucasian is only six thousand years old. When you're dealing with what what they call now Nordic the word is Nordic. When you get the Nordic people, the Nordic people would be what a Neanderthal is. It's almost like a nickname, the Nordic people. They would be what would go beyond that 6,000-year period. And they had a very short shelf life on the planet. That's why I said earlier they were extremely sterile. They're extremely animalistic. They literally... You know, they had sex with all over, but from men to women, that was it. wasn't even a name for what they were doing. It was just what they were doing. But when you want to go back to, let's say, they say between ten thousand six thousand years, you're dealing with a modern Caucasian male that was able to reproduce on his on his own with male and female, and able to to able to formulate words. But prior to that, you're not even dealing with something that was even in the class of being a, a Homo sapien. But the Homo sapien white race is again nothing that has really been found until between the between the six thousand ten thousand year period. So that's what people don't differentiate between what is modern and what is something that is completely an animal chain group. Mm. Mm. Man, that's 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 real interesting, man. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, all of that was fifty thousand years ago. So I mean, we got bones in Africa that go back. Millions, and millions, millions. Of years. millions. So, what species were they a part of? Because I mean, obviously, this is way before you know. Mm-hmm. what I'm saying, even when we talk about the Koi Sand, right? You know exactly. So, when you talk about, let's say, like I always hear Lucy and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what specific branch of the human tree was that? You got depending on where you are on the planet. I mean, depending on where you are in in Africa, because. You can go back to let's say seventeen million years. Mm. The, the the pyramids of Giza are dated seventeen million years. You got um, the Sphinx. I forget the correct term for the Sphinx. That's ten thousand five hundred years. Mm. That's relatively new. Seventeen million years. You're dealing with Kushite people. Kushite people. That's between what people call now Ethiopia. That's seventeen million years. That's a group that is considered to be what they want to call pygmies, 17 million years, or the Danig. Wait, wait, so, wait, hold on. Go ahead. So you just said the pyramids? 17 million years. Pyramids are 17 million 17 years. million years old. Wait, wait, wait. It's the first time over here. Dude. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. So, so, wait, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. You know, the house, wait. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, 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 uh-huh. Because, I mean, like, one thing is, like, I, I, I've heard, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, that the right. Sphinx came before the pyramids. Right. Um, and we were just talking about it, Giza, because mm-hmm. of course we know that th- those weren't even the first ones, right? No, they're not. Right. All right. So, so how how do we how do we get? Well, should I say what evidence do we have to go off of the show? Because yeah, you have, because I mean, you're talking of 
A long time. Because, I mean, you know, most things I hear is like, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, 10,000, you know what I'm saying, even 50,000. Mm-hmm. 17 million. 17 million. You got, first of all, if you want to go back to Graham Hancock, Caucasian, that gives a dated time for how old they were. Because the first step that he went was he compared it with the Sphinx. Okay. And he superseded the time period of the Sphinx. Because you got to realize that area of the Nile was a fertile grassland at one point. And now it's, of course, sand. So something to get to that point that he dated takes millions of years to do. It's the same thing as, let's say, for example, weathering. That literally, if you look at the Giza pyramids, you don't right. see much of a design. You see a weathered group, a, a weathered piece of monument, stele. Right. That's a that's over a hundred thousand year process to do, because that's weathering that just ripples effect. So, you gotta realize also the person that they give that type of reference to in terms of the pyramids at Giza is is Khufu or Cheops. Okay. But he didn't build it; he renovated it. So, if a person is, if he goes back that far and just renovating something, then mm-hmm. automatically you're going to give it. When was that? That he renovated it? I that was, I, I can't even remember the date of that. But the Ooh. one thing we do know Ooh. for sure that he was Ooh. not the builder of it. God, just the estimated time. Frame, right. How long ago? It had to have been at least about fifteen to 20,000 years within the BCE period. And he he renovated. Yeah, he ain't built. that was a renovation. Cause remember, mm-hmm. you got you know Khufu, Caffrey. You know he's a he named the rest of them after his two sons. But that's not even you gotta realize when you go into thousands, that's just very as relatively new for African person. Cause let's take for example the the um, Uganda. We have yet to really touch the Uganda group of people. We skip over Kush. Mm-hmm. Where most of the rulers were female. Go back and referring again to Robin Walker's book, When We Ruled, most of the of the rulers, if not all of them, in Kush were female. When you step into Kemet, which is literally a start of a six thousand year period, still relatively new. Right. And it's crazy, it sounds crazy because I'm talking about thousands, but it's still new compared to how far back we go. So when you're dealing with, with, with Kemet, which starts with, with, with Namir or Menes, remember, that was created as a defense mechanism from the Asians right. and the whites trying to come in and the mulattoes trying to come in and take our, our information and take our women, which is, you know, of course, we refer back to the struggling back civilization by Chancellor Williams to confirm this. That's just 6,000 years. When you, see a, when you see a stele or a text that shows... Um, men as cutting the heads off of Asians, that's just a th- that's just that's just six thousand years old. But when you go back to let's say the Kushites that have more pyramids in Sudan right. as there are in Memphis or Thebes or Hermopolis, that's in in that sense that's over three hundred thousand years. So the Khoisan, we are attributing Khoisan to the oldest people on the planet based on European. Dating. Remember, gotcha. most of the time when we get dates, we're using, we're going by his mm-hmm. books, his definitions, his mm-hmm. authority. Well, that's so when, when they we, made the jump. That, exactly. So when you, let's say, for example, we go back to, we want to pick Ugandas. Because the, the Ugandan people are another group that's really old. You can go back to the people of Mali, mm-hmm. the Dogon group. Yeah. The, Go- the Dogon group that says that their ancient ancestors came from a whole different constellation. And they go back to the time of the Nun period on the planet when it was a primordial period on the planet. And that's over at least 17 to 20 million years old. You got to realize there's no real date for us. Most of the time when we give dates, we're going by the Roman calendar, right. we're going by the Jewish calendar, Islamic calendar. So... Right. They don't overlap even make any damn sense. You talk about going no, and no, counting no. back. Like who who said that this is zero? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Then that's these Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Mm. Absolutely, man. That's um so what, how long ago would you give um the the first African civilization? It's it's literally <clears throat> 
because when you say civilization again, that's a really tricky word of civilization because a, a civilized not to play semantic games at yeah, all. Yeah, no, no, no. Break but it down. but Break civilization it down. itself means a group that was once in an unvil, uncivil state and brought to a civil. I mean, I civilized you. It's like getting a dog, and you and you domesticate the dog. We're never civilized people. Most of like even the shirt I have on that says "Father of Civilization" mm-hmm. itself is literally a, a non sequitur word. It's a mm-hmm. non sequitur statement because we're the civilizers. Hmm. So I don't have to be civilized if I civilize everybody. I'm not I'm not tamed. You're tamed. So there's no real date. The reality is the further you go back, the darker the planet gets. So we can go back to wherever you want to go. You can point to um, a part of New Guinea. And the New Guinea people are, is another group that was never touched by um, Neanderthal DNA, white DNA, they make sure that they stay within their own group and they go back 300,000 years. And they just give the Khoisan 100,000. But we stepping back into the million, you don't have a real date for us. Mm. There's no real calculation for how, for how back we go. That's the reason why we have to start doing our own excavating of our own property. Because if we start doing such... That's when we can really give real dates. Most of the dates that we're given is based on their calendar, their existence. Because, again, when you give 6,000, notice 6,000. 6,000 is the time of their modernization of, of the white race. Mm-hmm. I don't even call them white. I call them what they are, Neanderthals. Mm-hmm. So, for me, when you give a date, let's say, for example, when they start, usually when they start, let's say, the Christian calendar, Roman calendar, it starts at the birth of Jesus Christ. But then... They give an overlap of a date when in reality it really starts when they were modernized mm. as as the white race when they were yeah. in another group where they sped up in evolution and they were no longer in just a Neanderthal group along with their with their Asian family. Mm. So you can't really give a date for us. Mm. So it's it's like for example, you got a Moorish group that will say that we might we were here first from Uganda. And migrated into America well over 800,000 years ago. And we set up civilizations here, but we we were in Africa first. And so that's a group because they said we we can. And my father teaches us, Dr. York, that we took the rubber plant and planted it here in parts of Mexico, parts of Texas, and parts of Illinois. And that was also, you know, when they talk about the Almec group that... Also, Clyde Winters, and this is another source, Clyde Winters confirms that we came out of West Africa and, were, and came here at West Africa first and went to America and set up civilizations. And they actually have, of course, um, monuments and temples and stuff like that that were built. But then, you know, you have the, the Columbuses and everybody that tore them down. Hmm. But then it's like some of them are still up in Mexico to this day. Hmm. Man, that's the heat, man. Ain't no yeah. date for us, man. Ain't no yeah. date. You can't, yeah. go, you can't date us. It's, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. Okay, man. Okay, so we're going we gonna to take a quick little break. Then um, we're going to come back, man, and uh, uh, just do some wrap-up. But also, you know, I kind of want to build on uh, how, we, how we did make the jump from so-called being uncivil mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. primates to actually mm-hmm. what we would not call homo sapiens mm-hmm. or civilized beings. So mm-hmm. hold that pause. Um, we're going to play a little music. And Real like talk, that. J, baby. Thank you, God, one, baby. Hey. Oh. Hey, yeah. Oh, oh. Sure. Shake her head, then the doctor kill her. It's a crazy world. Got a lot of good will. They only want money, then they'll kill her. It's just lots of spill her. Have you ever been raw? Pulling out of windows? In a bad door, not a 5-0. Got your infections. 
You ain't do nothing. You ain't do nothing. Out of hand cuff. I beat on you. God damn. You can't put your hands up. This wall fell. There ain't no bleed in the field. If he draw down, the shouter gon' shoot you quick. He don't care about your mom. He don't care about your brother. He don't care about your kid. He don't care about your kid. He don't care that you love. You ever heard of Ed Pipe? What about a killer named Dude? If an Ed Pipe, ain't that boy gon' shoot? With a brand new group. Strong on that loop. Get lost, Bermuda. Ain't no love computer. saying so much is because of their lighter skin tone. People don't understand that you have varying degrees of Khoisan. You realize Khoisan was also as, as brown as we were sitting here. Mm. They're not all light, but they push the light image. You have to also realize too is that, and this, this was a question to me, well, if they're 100,000 years old and they didn't mix as according to you, you know, at what, if they enter, you know, they Class with, the, with with Neanderthals and they were raped, but for the most part they don't have any Neanderthal DNA. How they get light? You have to understand something with with the oxidization of something. Everything oxidizes. It's like a rust on a car. If you pour water mm. on that car, right. there's going to be varying degrees of a, of a rust within the melanocytes of your skin, mm. combined with the oxygen because oxygen is like water. This it is water. So if you pour it on something that is already rusting, it's going to end up, depending on how much you pour, it's going to depend on how much it rusts. So with, because remember, melon is not just a vitamin D strengthening substance. Right. You also have magnesium and chlorophyll that's combined with melanin too. And so when something oxidizes, it's going gonna, it's gonna to oxidize in different degrees. So when you see... For example, Khoisan to this day that are some are brown, some are are lighter. That lighter skin tone is based upon the oxidization of their skin. It's the same thing in Sudan to this day. You have extremely dark Sudans just like this, and you have Sud Sudanese or even a little lighter than us. It depends on the oxidization combined with the magnesium molecule in their system. 
because you have different elements. It's not just vitamin D. It's also the magnesium in it, the magnesium molecule that is combined with the blood in their system is going to give them a varying degree of light or dark. Right. So we don't we don't put the other element of magnesium and chlorophyll in. We just deal with the vitamin D part, and that's part of it too. Mm. So that's very important. Yeah, man, that's interesting because like I have to make the point that you know what I'm saying like. I mean, we get that a lot of us over here have been mixed into whatever, but I mean, there there have always been a variety of shades of black, you know what I'm saying, without mixing with Europeans, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, people that make that point, you know what I'm saying, just because you, you light-skinned that you got to be mixed, mm. I'm like, I'm like, okay, that may fly maybe in the West, but mm. I mean, that's not like a general statement to blackness or black people across the... And, the, the point you just made, you know what I'm saying, yeah. was, was, was very relevant. Cause Cause that, as they say, sub-Saharan. Sub-Saharan is like saying sub kemet They say this to this day. Everything that's beneath that line is fully African and zero Caucasian. And full and, and zero Neanderthal or white blood in them. To this day. They've done whatever they could. That's why I say earlier, back to the Khoisan, they've done whatever they could to push genetically out whatever rape took place. The problem is when we when when Kemet, they didn't do the same process. When the new kingdom came in after the middle kingdom, once the twenty fifth dynasty was nah, over, was it. the <laughs> immigration laws was broken down and they allowed Caucasians to set up and they ended up coming in and taking. And it is it's that's the that's the problem is that with us, you know, Chancellor Williams says you're, as well as nearly fully, you're supposed to mm. study history to learn what not to do. Mm. And we're not realizing that if you're trying to become pure and trying to get your, your genes back, it's not going to work. See, remember, us in America, we're tumbling genetically. Our, our hair is getting thinner and our skin is getting lighter because of us interbreeding so much during slavery. Mm. The problem is we're going to have to come together and we're going to have to make dark a prominent... Um, destination for our people if we're going to continue and progress back because this is not just our time now which is a sun cycle now is not just a time to read books it's a time now to perfect our genetics mm. Mm. so man uh, what um what solutions would you give or how how we could <laughs> leave mm-hmm. leave the Neanderthal out of your life in terms of <laughs> in terms of all forms because the more you're around somebody the more familiar you're gonna get with them. You thinking, yeah. well I'm just gonna do business or well, I'm just gonna be cool with them. Next thing you know, you you're marrying. Mm-hmm. So we gotta get to a point where we are amongst Africans only and we strengthening ourselves because the more we're around ourselves, like to this day Two, I, I could have a child by a woman darker than me and it can come out light because mm-hmm. of how we've tumbled so much because of so much raping and interbreeding and slavery. Mm-hmm. But even that happens, you still have to treat, you still have to teach that child. You're going you're gonna to take a, a person from this dark group and you're going to have to mix and you're going to have to do whatever you can to, to strengthen back so it will no longer be a tumble. It's going to be a progress. It's going to be a climb. It's, cause it's crazy because you got the Australians when the Europeans came in into Australia they bred out a whole stock of them right and it, it, I think it was a, a movie I forgot the whole name but it was called Rabbit Proof Fence hmm. Rabbit Proof Fence is a whole story about how they took um, Australians that were dark extremely strong not eat the hair and basically Bred them, they, you know, they, they, they took a white person, had a child, took a white person, had a child, mm-hmm. each child, each child, each child, until they completely bred them out of existence. Man, I read an article on how, like, they kind of did the same thing in, like, mm-hmm. like Brazil, yeah. Puerto Rico, Colombia. That's kind of like a, a common tactic, common and that's tactic. the reason why, like, you look that even today, you know what I'm saying, it's weird, like, people mentally are actually trying to, have been trying to move towards being lighter, yeah. you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like, and trying to, you know what I'm saying, get the yellow bone and, you know what I'm saying, everything else like that. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, not want to talk to anybody that's, you know what I'm saying, dark skin. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that's interesting. You know, like you said, like when we kind of um, assimilate within different cultures, we definitely do take on their mentality. Exactly. And, 
you know, um, I get how people argue from a principal standpoint that cannot be a bad thing because if you assimilate into the right culture, then it could be something that's beneficial to you, just like how on multiple occasions Europeans have assimilated within African culture sure. and they have elevated themselves. And right. so I, I get it, you know what I'm saying, from the principal argument of that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the the practical situation is that we have assimilated into a culture that promotes negativity, mm-hmm. violence, over sexualization, a lot of confusion yeah. and things like that. And so, you know what I'm saying? We're 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 assimilating into cultures that are not beneficial to, to our existence. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. have only shown, you know what I'm saying, to be consistent consistently negative for us and the more that we actually move away from it you know what i'm saying the 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 better you know what i'm saying we actually become you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying mentally physically uh you know what i'm saying like and just all around mm-hmm. um so um you know one uh, another thing i want to talk on so we, we we were we started with the whole conversation around evolution right you know what i'm saying and so you know, you always hear that we had a like we had a common ancestor. You know what I'm saying? Because with other primates and things like that. And I mean, when you understand evolution, you're talking about um, natural selection. You're talking mm-hmm. about environmental pressures and things like that that may make a. Um, different species evolve a different way than others based on need and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so. Um, what can you say about what made that specific species separate mm-hmm. like we see it today? Was it just environmental pressures or was it, you know what I'm saying, something Which else? species you're talking about? Well, I mean, I, I guess what species would you call, and you know, we, you, I, I guess I used to use species in quotations, okay. um, but uh, what, what species would you say is the quote-unquote common ancestor between, um, I guess, humans and apes and stuff like that? Well, common, the common group in terms of us as African people would be the Homo sapien, or what they call Homo sapien sapien. Um, in terms of whites and Asians or Europeans and Asians, they would still, because they're not fully Homo sapien, mm-hmm. they would be still a part of that Neanderthal group that is still trying to evolve. They're mm-hmm. not even fully... They're, remember, the European is still just 96% human being based on DNA evidence. The other 4% is Neanderthal. The Asians are 2% Neanderthal and 98% human being. They would be related. They would be the most related group to each other because they have the same DNA ancestors of Neanderthals. So you're dealing with, let's say, for example, you take the Latino. Latino literally is a group of so many different groups mm-hmm. that depending on the region from where the, you know, Cuban, from, from, from Cuba to, to Puerto Rico to Haiti to Panama, you're dealing with the majority of 60-65% is African people mm. the further deep you go in that area yeah but I see th- th- numbers higher than that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. especially in parts of Panama mm. in parts of Haiti most of Haiti is 95% mm. that's why they're the most oppressed group outside of Africa and inside of us here that's constantly dealing with so much oppression from the white race hmm man that's uh Hmm. So, let me ask you. So, we, we, when we're dealing with, um, how do I want to frame this question? Um, yeah, sorry. I, I, I feel blank on that one. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I was thinking too it's hard. Okay. I, I, I missed it. But, um, even with here's the test, I may help you remember that the question again. The, the, the missing part, if you go back to the chart, they always use this pyramid text where they show the racial chart in Kemet, where they show mm-hmm. the darkest to like, they got the, the Nubian, those of Kemet, and those that were of European descent that came in that was either, they were either Asian or they were just came out of the Caucasoid Mountains. The first one, if you look close enough, the darkest one 
didn't have any hair. The only thing you saw was a wig they were using. Notice that. The further you go back to the old kingdom, they had to use prosthetic like beards and wigs. Why would they have to do this if they already had hair in the first place? Hmm. You got to realize when you, when you mix with someone outside of your stock, you do two things. You regress yourself and you progress them. See, when we deal with Dr. Welsing's information about racism and white supremacy and we, gen we genetically eliminate them when they have a brown child, the other side to that is what happens to our genetics. We lose potency because we mix in with whites. See, when you deal with something called hirsutism, which is a Neanderthal white trait, that is an abundance of hair on your body. Right. You, you, see that. <laughs> you inherit that trait. But you got to realize the original African didn't have any hair. Notice, the, if you look at most Africans, when you go further and further, the, the darker they are, whether they blue, black, or purple, or whatever, black, black, they barely have hair on their body. But the further Caucasian you are, you see the most hair. Right. So that tumbling shows the fact that once we mix, we begin to start attributing an abundance of hair. So we had to groom ourselves a certain way. We had to do... We had to get haircuts. We had to get beard trims. We had to do all types of things. It, uh, that's into, let's say, um, someone that started in the New Kingdom, Shashong I, he was a, a pharaoh at that time, and he was one of the first that was, you look at him, they show him to be very much a mixture of uh, the Nubians and the Hyksos. Whereas you go back to Namir or Mentehotep II, no hair, but jet black. Mm. And so that's, that's showing that there was a, um, a process that if I mix with this group, I'm going to inherit a part of their problems. You know, that's why you see it's, it's groups. It was one of the first books written about the white race where on the cover it shows this wasn't even it wasn't even considered to be a disease to have hair all over your body. It was just a part of them. Hmm. That's why if you go into the parts of the Moorish information after the Dark Ages, when the Dark Ages was going on, most of those Caucasians was suffering from what we classified as hirsutism, hers where we had to shave them down to even deal with them. Hmm. You know, it's just documented. Yeah, documented. So yeah, man. Um, I, I did. I did think of my uh, my question yeah, I had, and uh, we can we can uh, kind of close out on this one, mm -hmm. but. Um, when when um, we kind of built on it um, a little bit off off air, um, when you're dealing with the African American, gotcha. you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, things out there. You know what I'm saying. Some people saying, you know what I'm saying, we 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 come from we the Hebrews. Some people saying we Moors was already over here. <laughs> Some people saying that we native people. Um, we I saw an article that said ninety eight percent native. I've seen other studies that show that we actually have less native DNA in it in us than we think. What are we as it relates to the 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 so called African American? Because we know that you know what I'm saying. Well, me personally, I'm just looking my right. it's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. I look at us as Africans in America. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like point blank, yeah. point blank, period. Right. But I mean, there, there's a lot of um, controversy, yeah, you know is. what I'm saying, around this. Because, like, you get it, you know what I'm saying? We have a lost identity. You know, we're trying to reclaim, you know what I'm saying, a mental state that was lost. So, how would you sum up the African, the so called African American? Mm -hmm. It depends on your genetic family history. You got to take it to, to that analytical tedious process for example you could have been an African enslaved and ran away and then you encounter American Indians and then next thing you know they enslave you and then next thing you know because of that 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 indentured servitude that you with them you mix in with them so your child and not only you might have a child that was African and now they mix with that American Indian blood of those that were here as well. Yeah. And then next thing you know, it's a you, mutation. It's, right, it's a mutation. Yeah. So you're it's it just depends. Everybody's not the the thing is is that a lot of these ideologies, whether it be Moorish, whether it be Hebrew, 
they'll try to put everyone in the same pool without doing any DNA testing or any family history. Because a lot of people now that are in America now, if they do DNA testing, even before, let's say, something happened with American Indian and going back to West Africa mm. from, from, from the slave trade and even from kidnappings, you got that uh, coming from the Congo. Because remember, at some point, you had whites that went over into Africa and they were taking um, Mandinkos. It wasn't even a slave trade no more. They were just kidnapping them based on gun ransom. And it's, some of us are from the... It's, that are that, that are Mandinka tribes. So it just depends on where you tie yourself back based on genetic testing. But in reality, we're still all African. Because even if you say that we were here before anybody else, I'm like, but you even even before there was a continental drift, everything sprout out, out of the mother continent, which is Africa over here. Even if you find Africans in Europe. Mm-hmm. You had to come from someplace first, and they they started from the middle point and spread it out. Right. That's you still are gonna go back to. You can't run from that. Is a lot of people are doing that because they have a problem with Africans. They hate the, the 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 history of it, and it's crazy how you hate the history of something that is basically the foundation of everybody. Mm. But you can't. The thing is, you can't. You can't. You can't be a more in Hebrew without having contact with Africans. Every even in Christianity and Islam, they have no real um verification or any real validity if they do not tie themselves back to being African. Hmm. Or any contact with an African. Even the Abraham story, the Moses story, Jesus, they all connected to Egypt, which is in Africa. But right. you're saying that they did something bad, but you're the ones that had connections to them. No. The reality is that we are all, in terms of the in terms of the black race here in America, African race, even in, even in Brazil, even in the Bahamas, even in the Haiti, we're still African. Yeah, it's it's still it, you can't you can't escape it because you just don't want to. I don't want to. Do, I'm I'm this now. It's like look, right. Noble Jirali still, if you want to call yourself more a scientist of America, he still had to deal with Africa. Right. Because right. the people he was te- that was teaching him really was, was was more or less parallel Arab Egyptian, but he still had to. If you want to call yourself more, that's still North African. That's not you can't say well North Africa is really here. I'm like look, you have to still tie yourself genetically, and they a lot of them don't want to make the confession that they're gonna go back to Africa again. Yeah. You can't you you can't go outside of that. Yeah, man, and, and that's what you see. Like the the reoccurring theme, no yeah. matter what it is, is we didn't come from Africa. Like regardless of yeah, where, wherever it needs around to, yeah. the end result is either you know what I'm saying we 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 were we were sold by Africans over <laughs> here, or the slave trade did happen, and so we were always over here, and it's kind of like. Okay. Uh, but I mean, I, I think the point that you brought up is. Um, it's very, very yeah. relevant because, you know, um, like the Africans in the Western Hemisphere, you know what I'm saying? We, we're we interesting when you look at us um, across the board because there were so many different factors that went into how we are today, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> whether you talk about um, voluntary or involuntary admixture that, you know what I'm saying, went on. And right. one of the main problems I have is when certain people find out their genetic background Mm-hmm. And so then they want to take that and tie back to everybody. Like, because you may have more native in your native blood or whatever, you know what I'm saying? You understand that that applies to everybody. It doesn't. And that's not true. And the really the only thing that I have seen across the board that majority of us have is sub-Saharan, half, sub-Saharan, Sub-Saharan African, African DNA. Ancestry. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Ancestry. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the one thing that I have seen mm-hmm. that, that does show to be across the board. You know what I'm saying? Like, like 50 percent and up, you know what I'm saying? Like you mm-hmm. said, some places 70, 80, 90, oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. we talking about in the Western Hemisphere based mm-hmm. on everything that went on. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's just a whole interesting dynamic that I think that we kind of need to just research more on, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because I think that the more we research, the less um, the, our perception of Africa changes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they give you the poor Africa... 
you know, the disease, right. Africa, right. you know what I'm saying? They don't show you all the different things that they've done to to, to strip Africa of, you know what I'm saying, its glory that it still has to this day. It does. You know what I'm saying? That they're still taking the wealth from the, the whether it's taking the wealth from the land or the energy from the people. Right. Um, you know, you see all that going on. Yeah. Um, man, was there, is there anything, man, that I, I, I that you want to build on that I didn't get to oh, that I didn't get to cover, man? Um, the main thing is that just to say it's now it's about dealing with DNA evidence on things that you are arguing on. If if you're for example, that's why I said it's time to deal with nine mind radio because still dealing with facts, but whatever is being presented, it's about showing, okay, where's your DNA evidence to prove this is to be true? If you're gonna sit up here and I think just to show a difference about dealing with whites in terms of what produces fail melanin in whites. You're dealing with the OCA2. This is very important. The OCA2 and OCA1 gene. There's a difference between the two. Mm. OCA1 gene is mostly connected to Neanderthal. OCA2 is connected to the African albinos. Usually when you define um, melanin, they didn't make a differentiation. Dr. Africa, Laila Africa, when he defined whites as having the ones that are dealing with the OCA2 gene, he was incorrect on that statement because OCA2 deals with the African albino, which is no genetic trait to Neanderthal, whereas OCA1 is the one that is in Neanderthal group. There's different OCA2s. See, in African albinos, you got OCA2, OCA3, OCA, OCA5. But the first OCA1 is Neanderthal group. And that's what shows a differentiation genetically between African albino and just Neanderthal. And that's, a, that's how you are able to marry up. That's how you're able to marry up who's who without getting them mixed together. That's, that's important. That's why I say genetics, in order to deal with facts now, we have to start dealing with genetic testing to show who's who on the planet Earth. Because that in itself, having your uh, fail melanin, which is what the Neanderthal or white race is, is actually a disease. Their whole manifestation with dealing with the MC1R. MC1R is red hair, yellow hair, and deficiency in protein, which creates the gray hairs that you see. That is MC1R genetics. That is a disease. This is genetics. I'm not just making these abbreviations and acronyms up. Yeah. This is if you do this, this genetic testing, you realize they don't think is whites don't like to be analyzed. They've been using to, they've been analyzing black people for so long that they're able to say what we are with this, with that. That's why when I looked up, for example, you know, before I, you know, going even further, when I looked up Iceman's Inheritance by Michael Bradley, he starts off going into phrenology in terms of uh, the skulls and the, the different sizes. And that's what they did with Johann Blumenbach. And that's how they put us in these, you know, these racial categories of who's the smartest and who's the dumbest. But the, the crazy thing about it is when we go keep using the Khoisan as a as an example, the further they they would they they had to, the women had extremely small heads, but they were the most advanced at the time on the planet in terms of technology. See, we define technology by computers and iPhones and cell phones and all this other stuff, but in terms of technology and language, those women were the most advanced on the planet in terms of uh, mo- in terms of mother, mother mitochondria DNA. So that's important. So I'm gonna leave with doing genetic testing. DNA evidence is where we're gonna get who's who on the planet Earth to show like, look, you didn't come from me. You are your own Cro-Magnus genus homo uh, species evolution. And us over here are the ones that we kept. Cause another thing with the Khoisan, their language is extremely um, technical to even define. That's why when the whites to this day, National Geographic come in and try to excavate their land, they can't speak to them. They have to 
basically film them from a distance because their group they make sure like no you're not gonna learn our language that's something that even us here today have to learn how to do which is incorporate a language that's in our frequency so that we can push white interference away from our culture that's important man you can't you can't come to a a awakening of African culture but you keep bringing in the Europeans who took mm. it from you so true man so true He always come with that heat, man. <laughs> hey, man, what can uh, what can the people, um, you know what I'm saying, follow uh, more of your work, uh, you know what I'm saying, or, or get in contact with you? All right, so what, I, what I'm be doing is, in Nine Mind Radio, I'm starting that in a month. So I get people to stay tuned on me. If you find me on Facebook, just under Ali York, you know it's me when I got the hat on that says Ali York, that's me. <laughs> And stay with me because I'm going to, matter of fact, I'm going to give the conference call um, information now. Because it starts, it's actually, um, I'm going to start it, it's going to be a month from now. It's going to be the end of October, the last Wednesday of October. Um, this And the number of it is 641-715-3272. And the passcode will be 7 it's going to be 706344 pound and it's going to be every Wednesday night for those that are here in Houston 7 p.m. and those that are going to be on the East Coast going to be 8 p.m. but that's if you want to stay in contact with me I'm you know on uh, Instagram Ali York 9 Ali underscore York 9 and then on Facebook it's Ali York so just stay tuned man yeah, and as even you two, uh, Ali York as well. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, my man doing big things, man. I can say again, I appreciate you coming out, mm-hmm. man. Chilling with your buddy, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, man. Before I get out of here, man, just remember that um, Wade Noble says, The essence of power is the ability to define someone's reality and make them live according to their definition as though it was the definition of their own choosing. Who has the power over your life and how are you using your power to transform your life? Until next time, peace. Look like a million fireflies saying we shall overcome. Give us freedom now. Freedom now. Hear the people shout. We shall overcome. Give us freedom now. In the end, It's our ideals, our values, values that drive our citizens still. Time and again, they lend a hand to their neighbors and give back to their country. They take pride in their labor, their generous in spirit. Uh, money and the power, answers and the questions, fools and the genius, devils and the blessings, mind over matter, rebels and the lessons. Faith in the religion, priest in the confessions. We would ever slap and not just say we keep a step. I used to vote left, now I'm looking for progression. Congress obsessed with the recession. Goal is oppression and it's met by our aggression. Given the impression our profession is gaining worldly possessions. Obsession with regression like we were never professors. I'm a nutty professor, put lighters into the sky just so you can see the truth. This ain't the time for discretion. They giving and repossessing like you can never possess it. I'm telling you, claim and aim it, whoever trying to depress you. I'm impressed with the joy. Now go on, put your lighters in the sky and make these people ask you why. What's up? What's up? What's up? To my people free, gotta break the mental bond This caused by slavery, then they gave us Jim Crow Not a prison system, if that don't work Then they got a Willie Lynch, I'm waking up every day Trying to be the change, lighting up my chakras on another astral plane Gotta visit metaphysics if you really wanna get it Then you really can't hit hit you what your spirit can exhibit Gotta take it back to Kemet, 600 BC Since then, under siege, now my people can't breathe Gotta know history 
stop chasing wealth All the money means nothing with no knowledge of self Ignorance is bliss to you coughing the blood Police justify murder by calling the studs Turn off the TV, learn the truth by politics Cause the media is the fourth branch of government huh? The only thing worse than physical slavery is mental slavery. We want freedom now. Yeah, it's run A. I'm back, baby. And it ain't cook crack. You know what I'm saying? We talking about real knowledge. Fuck with me. Give us freedom or give us death. Awaken this generation cause the last few slept Revolution's the resolution for this cricket constitution And institutions that paralyzed our youth Leaving them euthanized Treacherous truth, they lies Interpret our truth and rise Cars, clothes, and chains Claim you living, nigga, are you alive? They telling you Kuntas lies Claiming that he was crucified Give a blind eye to the genocide Can you please tell us for whom he died? Listen See, Massa beat the slave, gave him his language and religion And Massa was a Christian Believe him if you want, I'ma stay true to this mission You heard it, cattle follow religion straight to your lynching Halau Akbar, I'm a bell witness Fuck whoever in they feelings, I don't blame you if you're Christian You're bred to follow the culture, shit, I'm bred to be a king You can have them fairy tales, only the chosen will reign supreme I'm free! In the sky, look like a million fireflies Saying we shall overcome Give us freedom now Freedom now Hear the people shout We shall overcome